You got your snowshoes on? Yeah. Everybody see the pretty snow this morning? Oh, that was beautiful. I started walking my dog this morning, and then by the time we got around the corner, it was snowing. That was really nice, and it's so beautiful out right now. I mean, other than being a little chilly, the sun's out. We didn't get any snow in Rocky. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> a blizzard in Gastonia. Well, I tell you, I'm always excited when it's time to hear God's Word. How about you? Are you excited? Yep. It's okay to smile. <laughs> My goodness, we're in church. We're in the house of God. We should be excited. Is that right? Amen. Amen. We're, this is the Word of God that's about to be broken so that you can get some encouragement. Well, tonight... We're going to kind of continue our series. We started a series last week called Four Things That Will Always Remain. Boy, if you missed that one, you need to talk to Sister Beverly. She take good notes. <laughs> there was four things that always remain. Anybody remember what they were? The throne of God. The throne of God will always remain. The Word of God. The Word of God. The Church of God. The Church of God. And the Child of God. And the Child of God. They will always remain. No matter what forces come up against them, those four will always remain. Wow, isn't that encouraging tonight? Well, tonight we're going to talk about when God shakes us. Wow. Boy, I'm telling you, get your pens, pencils, papers ready because this lesson should encourage you. So if you would, stand with me. We're going to read our opening scripture, Hebrews chapter 12, 25 to 29. Boy, I tell you, I just sit in anticipation to see what the Lord's going to do tonight. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 25 to 29. Are we there? Wow, listen to this. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth... But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifying the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Let's pray. Father God, is once again that we come, thanking you for this privilege and this time that we can come and hear from you. Lord God, as we sit in anticipation to hear from you, we ask that you prepare our hearts to receive your word. Father, my prayer always is that I decrease and you increase. I pray that they see not me, but they see thee. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When God shakes us. I want you to think for a moment about... When have you been shaken or when someone shakes you? I came up with four times when someone shakes you. Let's see. Who can come up with one? How about this? To wake someone up. Isn't that right? Say, hey, get up. So you someone's shaken. In other words, they were asleep. Now you shake them to get them up. The next time is to get someone's attention. They're distracted. So you shake them. Say, hey, you see me over here? 
Anybody ever done that? Shook anybody to try to get their attention? Or how about you shake someone who's hysterical? And they're that was me. <laughs> I was hysterical. I'll be honest with you. I remember in 2006 when I was diagnosed with kidney cancer and the doctor told me that my wife was there. I was just hysterical. I didn't hear anything he was saying. And my wife said, hey! <laughs> so when you're hysterical. The next one is this. To check to see if someone's dead. You shake them. Is that right? Get a letter from the IRS. <laughs> Get a letter from the IRS. That'll shake you. So there was four things there I talked about. One was saying be ready. One was saying focus. And the other one was trust. And the next one was being obedient and repentant. When God shakes us, there are four reasons God shakes us. And the first one is, He loves us and He wants us to repent. God will shake us because He loves us. Is that right? Anybody remember Saul on the road to Damascus? Do you think he got a shaking? Oh yeah. Why do thy persecute me? So God wanted Saul to repent. It simply means he wanted him to obey. I want you to check this scripture out here. Revelation chapter 3 verse 19. Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Are you there? It says, As many as I love, I chase, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. God will shake us when we are not doing what he wants us to do and he wants us to repent what does that word repent mean what was that turn from your wicked ways God wants us to turn from our wicked ways and obey him I like to liken this one to we were dead. Remember I told you that sometimes you shake someone to see if they're dead? Well, God shakes us because we are dead. And the Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses in sin. I don't know about you, but thank God for shaking me. How about you? He shook you, you were dead, and He quickened you when you answered the call and repented of your sin. Thank God for shaking me. Have you been shaken? By God, Have you answered the call? Have you got up from the shake of God? God loves us and He wants us to repent. God also shakes us when we're sinning. That's what we're saying by repenting. Many of times we're going astray and God shakes us to get us to turn back to Him. Isn't that true? I want you to think about in your life, in your Christian walk, where you were on fire for the Lord, but then the fire started fizzling out. And then God put something in your life to shake you. And what was the difference? 
I told you, once the Lord shake you, as our scripture read, He only shakes you to remove those things that are made. Think about that. Anything that we put before Christ is an idol. And He will shake us until it falls out. Because only those things that remain after the shaking are those things that He has promised us. So, remember, if you are being shaken by God tonight, simply obey His call and return to Him. The next reason for shaking. He wants us to know that there is no one else who can satisfy us or give us true peace and security except Jesus Christ. He simply wants us to trust. Many a times when we are shaken, we are at the very bottom of our ropes. And there's nothing left but Christ. I told you the statement before, when Christ is all you have, Christ is all you need. And He will shake everything around us to get us to focus on Him. I like what He told the woman at the well. John chapter 4, verse 14. Take a look there. John chapter 4, verse 14. Boy, this is good. But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Wow. He wants us to know that the only thing that can satisfy us is Him. And He will put us in that situation where we only have Him so that we can see Him and trust Him. Have you ever been in that place where you were, couldn't control anything and you simply had to trust Him? I always go back to my... Um, surgery in 2006 I remember being about to be wheeled into the operating room I was going to sleep I didn't have control, I didn't know what they can do they could be doing whatever they want to me but I simply had to trust in God He was shaking my world what a year that was when God shakes your world and I tell you after the shaking I tell you I wouldn't trade it for anything in my life because I have I learned so much from that shaking. Now, so the other reason he shakes us is for trust. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to know that we are not in control of anything. And we simply have to trust him. You got to get to the point that no matter what you're going through, you're going to trust him. Are we there? Here's the next one. And boy, I want you to pay attention to this one. He shakes us because he has a mission for his church. He wants us to focus. He has a mission for us. Sometimes when we as Christians or even a church get out of focus, God will shake us to get in focus. Here's a story you probably know of Jonah. Anybody ever heard of that guy? My son probably laughing because we just finished reading Jonah. Um, but God told Jonah to go preach to Nineveh. But what did Jonah do? He went to Tarshish. He went the other way. He wasn't focusing on what God had. God had him on a mission to go and preach 
to Nineveh to save that to save that city. But Jonah knew better. He said, you are gracious, God. You're going to forgive them anyway. It doesn't matter what God's going to do. The question is, what did He tell you to do? I'll tell you tonight is, whatever He tells you to do, what? Do it. Who said that? Mary. That's right. Mary, His mother, said that too. So Jonah ran from his mission. But we see that God directed Jonah back. He went to Nineveh and preached a message. And the whole city was saved. What a mission. So we know God shook Jonah's world because when Jonah went to Tarshish, what happened? Hmm? He got swallowed up by what? It was a whale. It was a whale or a great fish. A great fish. <laughs> it was a great fish. You think that shook Jonah's head world? He was in the deep. That thing went down deep. But he said he prays from the depths and God heard him. God will shake us to get us on his mission. And he'll do whatever means necessary. Now, you ever remember the story of Joseph? Joseph was the one that had the coats of many colors. His dad loved him. But his brothers hated him because he was a dreamer. Jonah, I mean Joseph, brother threw him in a pit, sold him into slavery, slavery. He ended up in Potiphar's house. His world was turned upside down. But he stayed faithful. Even though God was shaking him up, Joseph stayed faithful. And the Bible said whatever he did, the Lord blessed it. All this stuff he went through. He said, man, my brothers threw me in a pit, sold me in slavery. Now I'm working in Potiphar's house. But all of that led him to the palace. And then in that later chapter, in chapter 50, it comes to conclusion when he said, you did this for evil, but God did this for good that much people can be alive. During that time was a drought. Joseph was the second in command and he saved the Israel people by being shook by God but standing faithful. Joseph had to focus. He didn't concentrate on the situation. He concentrated on the God of the situation. Knowing that God would protect him. Knowing that God would provide. I'm telling you that even as this church is being shaken, are you going to stay focused on the mission? And I'm telling you, the mission is saving souls for Christ. As we continue to pray for the box back here, we need to continue to focus on the mission that Christ has given us. I'll tell you this, if you focus on the mission that Christ given us, instead of each other, you'll stop fighting each other. Because you'll be busy working for the Lord. If you get busy t- working on the mission of Christ then the shaking will stop. But it will continue to be shaken until we focus on the mission that he has given us. Now we know about Job. Job was doing great. And then Satan came and said, Hey, he wanted to touch Job. He wanted to shake Job's world. But you know, as we talked about the four things that remain, the child of God always remains. God said, go ahead and do it. You can touch him. But don't take his life. So Job was shaken, 
but yet he remained. Why? Because he was a child of God. I'm here to tell you, sometimes when you're being shaken of the Lord, it's not because of something you've done. But he's using you as a message to the world. But even though God has shaken me, I am going to remain faithful unto him. When God shakes us, he wants us to be on the mission of winning souls. Now, the next reason Jesus, God shakes us is Jesus is coming back soon and he wants us to be ready. He wants us to be ready. You probably remember the story or the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 13, 1 to, th- um, 1 to 13, where the virgins had took their lamps, five of them took oil, five didn't. Then when it was time at night, the other one's lamps went down, but the ones that took the oil, they were ready. So God shakes us to make sure that we're ready for His Son to return. Are we concentrating on the return of Christ? Because I can tell you, we are living in the last days. And God is doing everything. If you look at the natural disasters that we are having, I mean, one after another, they say it's never been like this before. Do you remember Katrina and all the other ones? The earthquakes. And the interesting thing is just not happening in one location. It's all over the place. God is telling everyone to get ready. Look at this scripture. Revelations chapter 22, verse 12. Turn them back all the way up here. <laughs> can't go back anymore. <laughs> Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. It says, And behold, I come quickly. And get this. My reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. Are you ready for the return of Christ? Wow. I want you to think about that. With all this stuff that's going on, are you ready? Remember, sometimes we get shaken to wake us up because we were asleep. Get ready. He says, work wise day because the night cometh when no man can what? Work. Our job is to be on the mission for Christ. So if we're doing anything outside of that, we need to focus. And as our scripture that we read, our opening scripture, I would like to go back and read it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27. You get this. It says, And this word, yet once more, signifying signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain I want you to get it and be clear here tonight is that God will shake you until you have nothing else left but him So if you're being shaken and you're still holding on to malice, root of bitterness, anger, he will continue to shake. He will continue to shake. If you're still holding on to idols, you're still holding on to your bank account, if you're holding on to anything other than his son Jesus Christ, he will continue to shake. It's just like I was walking, and you know the trees, we got these dogwoods, and they got these white things on the tree, and as the wind blows, they fall. All right, man, that's just like the message. The Lord is shaking with that wind, and that stuff is falling off. 
God will shake us so that we can be ready to receive his blessings. But not only to receive his blessings, but also to be the blessing. Now God is giving us time to discover that when the world is being shaken, you don't have to be. Isn't that right? Because I'm telling you, there's a time that's coming where the world is going to be shaken. But as we said, the child of God will always remain. Now I want you to take a look at this scripture here. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Now I'm almost done here. It says, Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Man. I tell you today, people are not serving God with reverence. They just do anything in the house of God. Where is the reverence that he wants? Where is the godly fear? Whenever we have these things, I tell you, we will stop sinning. But until we have reverence and godly fear, we will do anything that we're big and bad enough to do. But God says we must serve Him with reverence. Whenever we do that, we go to a holy God, which is a consuming fire, and we see that we're nothing but dust. And we make the adjustment, and He saves us. Now look at Romans, I mean, Psalms 55, verse 22. Psalms 55, verse 22. And here's what we need to do. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Wow. Are you still carrying your heavy load? Are your hands still clamped, closed? Still holding on while he's shaking? He simply wants you to let it go and cast your burdens upon the Lord. That's what we need to do. We need to cast our burdens upon the Lord. And then whenever we do that, He will bring it to pass. Now i like two more scriptures and I'll close out with these two here. I'll make a statement first. I told you last week this statement. It says, so when things are being shaken, just remember, sometimes when things are falling apart, they may be falling into place. I want you to think about it. The next one is, just before something great happens, everything falls apart. Have you been there? Because you have to deny yourself and remove anything that you're holding as an idol or anything you're putting before Christ God has to break us to put us back together again so when things are shaking around your world I want you to be encouraged with this scripture here Romans chapter 8 verse 28 so when things are shaking in your world, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. Always remember Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And he says this. And we know that all things, can everybody say all things? All work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to to his purpose. I'm here tonight and I'm so excited that as he has called you unto his purpose, he will fulfill it. He said, wherefore his word has went, it will never return void. So if God has called you, you need to be excited that no matter how much you are shaken, God shakes us. 
to get us to obey, to get us to repent, repent, to get us to trust, to get us to focus, and to get us ready. It's all for our good and His glory. And I'll end on this last scripture. And I want you to get this mindset as Job said. Job 13, 15. Job 13, 15. He says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. If God is shaking you, pay attention. Make the adjustment. And do like, be like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I like to actually do an altar call tonight. As we talked about being shaken of the Lord, the Lord is shaking some of us up because we're dead. It's your time to come now. If you would stand, everybody stand. We'll do an altar call. We'll just take a few minutes for you to come down and say, Is God shaking me? Is God shaking the church? Is God shaking America? Is God shaking the world? There's a purpose for the shaken. And what we need to do is go before the Lord and say, Lord God, here am I. Send me. Let's pray. And the altar's open. You can come down at always at any time. Father God, we come. Lord, just thanking you for this time of your word tonight. Lord God, as we read tonight the scriptures that told us, Lord God, about how you shake us, Lord God, and the reason you shake us. And Lord God, we just thank you that you shake us because you love us. And Lord God, we always say just remove anything, Lord God, that may be hindering us from serving you. Lord God, the altar is open tonight. I pray that you touch someone's heart to come down and say, Lord God, forgive me of my sins. Lord God, help me to be that Christian that you will have me to be. I wasn't focused. I was doing my own thing. Lord God, I had anger, malice in my heart. But Lord God, you have shooken me. And now, Lord God, I'm letting it go. I'm casting all my burdens upon you. And I thank you for all that you do. So, Lord God, this is my prayer tonight. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen.